Hello and welcome back to Farm Theory News. Our first news story this week is on the border changes between Switzerland and Italy. And this week we have a live report from the scene which we will cross to now. Okay, could you like go away now because I have to record Farm Theory News. Bye. Bye. I'll be back <laughs> soon. <laughs> Welcome back to Farm Theory News. This week, reporting live from the Swiss-Italian border. You may be wondering, why is Farm Theory News reporting high up on a mountain? Well, it's so I can make this entire trip tax deductible. But it's also so I can criticize the BBC for how they reported on another news story. I'm actually not sure if I'm allowed to be out here, but let's just keep walking and say nothing. So this week the BBC reported on a story about the Italian and Swiss border moving because of climate change. They actually didn't even explain why the border was moving, they just used it as an opportunity to bang the drum of net zero. So let me explain why the border is moving. I'll set you there, hopefully you don't slide off. So this is one of the glaciers in question and the border is moving about 100 to 150 metres. And it's moving because the glaciers here in Switzerland are melting and moving the ridgeline, which is moving the watershed. So it's not really that the border's moving, it's more that the border is just being clarified. If we take a look at the BBC article, they start with a picture of a Matterhorn with zero snow on it. I swear they must have googled Matterhorn, zero snow, to get that photo. The BBC then goes on to quote figures of record glacial loss in the years 2022 and 2023, which was true, but they deliberately left out the winter of 2023-24 because the snowfall reached almost record highs. And in fact, glacial mass recovered and certainly didn't decrease last winter. This story really serves two purposes. Number one, it makes my entire trip tax deductible because I'm using it for my business. But number two, there is a more important point to take from this story. That the BBC is willing to ignore data and cherry pick data to reinforce their narrative. But here in Farm Theory News, we don't reinforce narratives, we just tell the truth. And the truth is that Switzerland's glaciers are melting and they are disappearing. No, stop it! I'm trying to record the news! Leave me alone! Surprised you haven't thrown snowballs at me. <laughs> That's not a good idea. No, I'm trying to record the news! I'm sick. Don't... <laughs> it's not funny! It's not funny! Anyway, what was I saying? <sighs> I'm out of breath now too. Switzerland's glaciers are melting. In 22-23, they did see record losses, but they did make a recovery last year. It would be a genuine shame if future generations missed out on scenery like this. But you don't need to make up stuff to get that point across. Just report the facts. What an absolutely insane place. Back to you in the studio, Andrew. This was a live report from the Matterhorn. Now, let's go get Jessica with the snowball. This is more a lump of ice, but it'll do the job. Let's go! I shouldn't run. This is a mistake. But I've got to get her in the head with this in the wall before she realizes. No, she's swatted me. No, she's swatted me. She's swatted me. She's swatted me. Yes! Got her! Oh my goodness. That was a mistake. Do you want to do the outro? Say it back. Back to the studio, okay. Andrew. Is it recording? I don't know, yes. Andrew is currently incapacitated due to breathing difficulties, so um, oh on that bombshell, I'm allowed to say that? Back to the studio. Back to the studio. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Andrew. We will cover the next couple of news stories from my studio here where it's a little bit warmer. This week, the last blast furnace in the Port Talbot steelworks has been shut down, leaving the UK unable to produce steel domestically. It's truly a shocking reality that a country that led the Industrial Revolution cannot produce a single ton of steel now. Port Talbot accounted for 1.8% of the UK's total emissions last year, and the constant taxing on the carbon has driven them out of business. The decision to prioritise emissions over industrial security should sure uh, I cannot speak today. The decision to prioritize industrial... 
The decision to prioritise emissions over industrial security should serve as a stark warning to UK agriculture. Just as steel production has been sacrificed for climate goals, agriculture and food production could be next. And let's not forget the irony here, while UK steel production has shut down, demand will just shift to imports from steel produced in countries like China with an even higher carbon emission. So in the grand scheme of net zero, emissions probably aren't even falling, they're just being offshored. Our next news story is about illegal chickens. <laughs> it is now a criminal offence to keep a single chicken without registering it in the UK. If that sounds ridiculous, it's because it absolutely is. A consultation launched under the previous Conservative government around these measures found that only 13% of respondents thought that this was needed. Yet, the Labour Party has pushed ahead with this anyway, and their justification? Bird flu. The claim this measure is to tackle bird flu. However, just last week, the UK was actually declared bird flu free. That's a bit of a tongue twister, bird flu free. <laughs> if you think this wool is, <coughs> wool? Oh, for goodness sake. If you think this rule is worth ignoring, be warned, you could spend up to six months in prison if you do not register your pet chicken. Our next news story is about the climate here in the UK and Ireland. We all know it has been an awful summer. It's been cold, wet, and just generally miserable. And maybe like me, you're wondering, where is this global warming that we were promised? Well, it turns out Ireland is one of the very few countries in the world that has actually got colder. The North Atlantic, which is just off our coast, is the only region of the world's ocean to have cooled over the last several decades, creating what scientists are calling the North Atlantic cold spot. This slowdown is likely caused by the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, which is ocean currents which drive warm water up from the Caribbean and keep the UK and Ireland above freezing. If you've ever seen the movie The Day After Tomorrow, you'll know what that is. Scientists are still debating what is causing this cold spot, but some theories include the melting glaciers in Iceland cooling that area of the North Atlantic. But no matter the cause, what it means is that Ireland has seen no increase in temperatures over the last several decades, unlike many other areas of the world. So for those of you tempted to throw that extra lump of turf onto the fire to do your bit for global warming and try and heat the temperatures up in Ireland, Unfortunately, it's not working. Instead, we are caught in a localized cooling pattern which is defying the broader trend of global warming. And unfortunately, this could mean many more wet, chilly summers for us. Let's finish this episode of Farm Theory News up with a few wee bits. Basically just short news stories. First up, we have the news that gene editing of crops is set to be rolled out in England. The UK government has announced plans to advance precision breeding technologies through new legislation. This aims to enhance food production, reduce costs for farmers, and support the development of crops which are resistant to drought and disease. Basically, we might get the technology the rest of the world has had for the last 20 or 30 years at some point in the future. Our next story in WeeBits is that there is a significant price gap developing in beef between the UK and Ireland. According to AgriLand, a price gap of 47 cents per kilogram has opened up between Irish and UK beef prices, with R3 male cattle now priced one euro per kilogram ahead of their Irish counterparts. This widening gap has raised concerns for Irish producers which sell 47% of their exports into the UK market. This week also seen AHDB release an update on on-farm inflation. Agricultural input costs have risen by more than 30% since 2019, according to the latest analysis by AHDB. The significant rise in costs has primarily been driven by inflation in fertilizers, feed and energy prices. Whilst there has been some slight decreases in the last year, the cost of production still remains well above 2019 levels. On my own farm, for about the last decade, my cost of production for a litre of milk sat between 18 and 20p. Currently, it is over 28p a litre. And that is not all costs. I'll do that in a separate video and get into the detail. That's just to show you that 30% increase is very realistic. We also have an update on blue tongue, which we mentioned in last week's show. Unfortunately, it has continued to spread with the first case being identified in Wales. Hopefully, as we're coming into the winter months, the spread will slow down and we will get it back under control. 
And our final news story on WeeBits this week is about a 3D printed vegan steak. How they're allowed to call it a steak, I have no idea, but apparently they are. UK retailers Arcado and Marks and Spencers have started selling the product made by a company called Reformed Meat. Is that right? They're not called Reformed Meat, are they? Redefine Meat. <laughs> Redefine Meat has received investment of 170 million to make a vegan product which is meant to replicate a steak as closely as possible. The ingredient lists of the fake steak include beetroot, seaweed, pea protein and algae. I really can't get my head around who this is catering for. If you're a vegan, surely you don't want something which replicates meat. And if you're not a vegan, surely you don't want to eat an engineered product made of beetroot, seaweed, pea protein and algae. This company has now been going for seven years and the fact that this is the first time I have heard of them should tell you a lot about their chances of making this a successful business. And using the phrase meat and steak when they have nothing to do with meat and steak should surely be illegal. It would be like if I sold you a bottle of Coke and in reality it was just a bottle of bog water. It's false advertising. I mean, why do they not get their own words for their products? They could call it a beetroot, seaweed, pea protein, algae burger, for example. I will head back to Andrew who's still up that mountain somewhere to sign this series of Farm Theory News off. Well, that is, no, stop, stop it. Turn to record the outro for season one of Farm Theory News and you're throwing snowballs at me. Oh my, oh, my ear. Oh. oh, that's, oh, that's awful. There's snow in my ear, literally in my ear. Well, that is going to do us for season one of Farm Theory News. We will be back very shortly with season two. I have counted Farm Theory News as a huge success. So thank you all for watching, for liking, for commenting, I really, really appreciate it. There will still be Wednesday videos. I just wanna try a few different ideas I have before we get back to more Farm Theory news. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, please do. It really helps and I'll see you next week.